We're here at the hyperspace wall at Cal IT2, and we've loaded an image set of the works of painter Mark Rothko. Using software developed by the Software Studies Initiative and the hyperspace wall team, we're going to be exploring this um, set of paintings using cultural analytic techniques, turning the paintings into sets of data that can be graphed, and turning those graphs into collections of paintings. First, let's take these images and let's move them over onto part of the wall's surface and then load some graphs on the other part of the surface. These graphs all run over the years of Mark, uh, Rothko's career from left to right, but their heights are indicated by um, different features of the images themselves. Texture, brightness, number of shapes, saturation, and we can use them to explore trends in this painter's life and work. So let's organize this tile set that we have by one of these dimensions of data. We can sort through different axes um, looking at something as simple as just the sequence of files, which we can view at different sizes, um, all the way down to a series of dots. Um, and we can size all the way up to high resolution textural images. I'm going to turn the size on this down slightly and then I'm going to add a transparency effect. You can actually see the original dot data in the midst of the color cloud and by mousing over any individual painting you can pick it out of the space of color trends over the course of Rothko's career. I'm going to turn the transparency feature off now and then size these images back down to a normal set. Now we can see the individual paintings no longer overlapping. Let's look at another axis. Um, we can cycle through all of these various axes that, and uh, perhaps arrive at one that has a particular shape or, a, um, or has um, an image like this one right here. We can see that uh, um, if we size that particular image up that's standing out from the graph and uh, choose to look at it, we can see um, that this one particular painting is uh, quite unusual in Rothko's um, career for one or another low-level statistical reasons. Now, this doesn't mean that we have to do all of art history or all of uh, visual analytics based on um, low-level mathematical statistics, but it does mean that the graph becomes an occasion to pick out an image and say, oh, this breaks the pattern, or this is typical of the pattern. Why? What's so particular about this image? The important thing about this software is that it allows me to explore um, transparent views. It allows me to um, look impressionistically at the way the data explodes into more complexity at one side of the screen and focuses off on the other. Let's go back to a tile view of uh, looking at all of these images again. Now, this is where we started. And we can see, looking at this data, that in some ways um, we've become very familiar with a data set that we understood from the moment we first loaded it. In other ways, we can see that there are uh, particular images, uh, a highly textural um, purple image late in his career, or a very particular uh, sort of semi-abstract uh, work from his uh, mid-period that jump out at us through particular analytic filters that we might never have picked out of the set if we had just been confronted with a light table. What's important about this is that we're thinking about paintings as aesthetic objects and data at the same time. And our interactive software is allowing us to um, do cultural analytics by identifying outliners, outliers, uh, looking at typical images, and thinking about the paintings both statistically and historically.